Hi everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady, and today I am trying to shovel frozen compost. So I realized this morning that my first greenhouse class is next Saturday, and we have a really cold forecast where we're like basically below freezing the whole forecast. It's, it's like, it's, it's like normal winter, which we haven't had for a few years. We even have snow in the forecast for tomorrow, which is crazy. But I was like, I better get, I better get some compost thawed so that we'll have some soil to be able to work with. So I am trying to get my veggie mix into a wheelbarrow so I can put it into the greenhouse where it is above freezing and it will thaw and then I'll be able to actually work with it. But I just wanted to share this phenomenon with you because it's not something that we ordinarily experience here in central North Carolina, where we have days on end where we're below freezing, but we're getting it this year and I don't like it. Wow, it is a million times better in the greenhouse. My fingers are absolutely frozen. She's going to make working on the computer a little bit more difficult. I'm gonna let this soil warm up and then I will go through the process of getting the hardy citrus de-seeded and then sown. And this is gonna be one of our activities that we do in all the greenhouse classes. I wanted to get some pre-sprouted. Um, it's probably gonna take two weeks to get them to germinate. So these won't be ready for the class on the 18th, but they will be ready for all the subsequent classes. So I'm pretty excited to get these growing and then all the participants will actually do some of their own seeding and they will get to take home some pre-sprouted trees as well. Uh, you know, I've had so many people, sorry, Ava Grace wants to come in. Woo, it's windy. Um, I need to get a cat door so the cats can come in and out at their pleasure. <laughs> Especially now that we have the comfort couch back in. <laughs> Oh, good Lord. <laughs> She's like, it's so cold, but the greenhouse feels so good. But I'm really excited to be able to share this hardy citrus, which is one quarter grapefruit, one quarter lemon, one half Ponsiris trifoliata. It's a plant that comes true from seed. It especially comes true from seed here because it's literally the only citrus that I have. So there's no cross pollination happening. I got it originally from the Ralston Arboretum and there's still a ton more fruit that hasn't fallen yet. Um, but this is what I've picked up so far. Uh, people are always so interested in it and it's not really a plant that I've ever seen available for sale. So this is kind of my way of luring people to come have fun greenhouse class experiences and leave with something that is actually really a great, a great plant to have. It's quite large. I mean, my tree has been in the ground about 10 years and it's at least 20, 25 foot tall, maybe 15 foot wide. So, you know, it's not a miniature thing. It's not something that you need to grow long-term in a container because I think it'll be too vigorous. You need to plant it in the ground. And again, it, it's hardy to zone seven because that's what we used to be. Now we're zone eight. Um, so it's certainly a good plant for this region and south of here. And the fruits are, are actually a lot tastier than I remembered. We actually sampled some of the fruit earlier this fall and I actually started eating it just like you would a grapefruit. So um, it is a bit more practical than I was giving it credit for. And um, I'm really excited to be able to share it with others. So I'm gonna let everything warm up and then later this afternoon, I'm gonna come in and show you the process for how easy it is to grow these plants from seed. And just for reference, here is the tree. And I believe that this is commonly called the citru, citru mellow. And again, it's a hybrid. You could see it's a little cold damaged because we're really cold right now. We're certainly not record cold, but you can see the leaves are curled and it can go completely deciduous. Um, it'll, it'll leaf back out. This has been hardy here, I think the coldest this tree's ever experienced was three degrees Fahrenheit. 
to give you a reference on its cold hardy nature. And all these fruit will just continue to fall. So you can see there's one right there. And now I'm gonna go into the greenhouse and start cutting these open. Okay, I'm here in the cozy greenhouse. I have a bowl of warm tap water that I'm just gonna put the seeds into just to sort of clean off. The key thing with citrus, growing it from seed, you don't want the seed to dry out. So that's why you're best to just like, literally cut it open and sow the seeds in the same day. Now this fruit is definitely showing signs of cold damage. So I don't think there's gonna be a lot of eating it. And you can see how thick the rind is. And this is one of the things that makes it cold hardy. It's got all this protection. Uh, it's also one of the things that makes it very bitter because it's got such a thick rind. Um, but you can see how it looks just like a normal citrus. And then you can see the seeds coming out right here and they're full of pulp. So I'm just gonna drop those into the warm water. And I'm really looking only for like fat seeds. So anything that's sort of small and diminished, there's no, there's no point in sowing that. And same thing here. The best way I have found to extract the seeds is just to quarter the fruit. And there we go. Say in here, each, each one, each individual fruit probably is gonna have six to eight viable seeds in it. So this is why I don't want these falling to the ground and rotting here at my house because I don't need to have a grove of super thorny, hardy citrus but I do think it's a really cool plant to grow and I, I want other people to have the opportunity to have it. Hence this process. And I have one more to come through, yep. So yeah, in each quarter, there's like three to four viable seed. When I say viable seed, let me give you an up close view. Okay, so you see these really small, flat. Those aren't really viable. See, there's no point in sowing those, but you see how big and sort of round and robust those are. Those are gonna be good seeds that will germinate really quite quickly. So another thing that I wanted to talk about with this hardy citrus is it's not grafted. So there's a big misconception when I talk about like, oh, this is a hybrid of lemon and, and uh, grapefruit, that doesn't mean that like a piece of grapefruit and a piece of lemon are grafted onto hardy citrus stock. This is genetically created. So that means that like there was a grapefruit tree and this man hybridized it with a lemon and then he grew out the seed of that hybrid and then when that bloomed, he hybridized it with the most hardy citrus, which is, I think, hardy to like zone five, Ponsiris trifoliata, which I think maybe has actually had a name change that I haven't kept up with. Um, and that's more of an ornamental citrus. Uh, Flying Dragon is the one that's kind of most common because it's got really cool contorted branches. So anyhow, the result of that hybrid is that genetically this particular citrus is one quarter grapefruit, one quarter lemon, one half Ponsiris trifoliata. So it's not grafted at all, but it has the genetics of all three of those things together. Plant breeding is a relatively complicated and long process. Um, Whereas grafting certainly doesn't achieve the same thing because when you're grafting, you have genetically different things just growing on one plant. Um, and it's cool to get grafted citrus. Most of that isn't actually hardy here in, in like central North Carolina. We're not really citrus growing area. So that's why this is kind of novel. 
but I get this question all the time and so I thought I would take the opportunity to try and better explain when I say something's a hybrid, that means that it's genetically created um, versus grafting different genetic things together. That's just a propagation method that doesn't change the genetics of the plant at all. So it's a pretty good distinction. Hopefully that makes sense to all of you. Um, you know, I worked for years and years as a, as a propagator and I used to do quite a bit of plant breeding as well. And so, you know, I sometimes take for granted that I understand what these terms mean and then I forget to explain them when I'm making the video. So hopefully that little explanation will make sense to all of you. And with that, I have extracted all the seeds from three fruits. It's uh, a fair amount of seed. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the process for getting these planted. Um, not complicated at all, but let me show you. Okay, hopefully I'm not cutting my head off this time in this video. I have my thawed, <laughs> yes, it is thawed, um, wheelbarrow full of veggie mix from Soil Cube. I am reusing these nice, deep, proven winter pots. Don't get mad at me, you guys. I'm just trying to recycle. <laughs> Not illegally producing your plants. And I have these great trays that the pots fit in. This is the main reason that I wanted to use these pots. Um, and so I'm just going to fill the containers up like three quarters of the way. Well, you know, more than three quarters of the way. Like that. And then... Though it's not necessary, I think I'm going to do two seeds per pot. So I'm just going to make two little divots with my fingers. And then let's see if I can get the seed out easily. Almost. This is why I thought this knife would work. <laughs> well, that wasn't. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Drop the seed into the hole. Since I said I'm gonna do two, I'm gonna go ahead and show you that I am in fact doing two. There we go. Get it buried slightly, just maybe like a half an inch. And that's it. The real key here is having a place to grow them where, where it's warm enough. And it's not warm in the, in the nighttime in here, but I think the daytime temperatures are going to allow for a really quick germination, or at least, fingers crossed, that's what I'm hoping for. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on time-lapse so I can get the rest of these pots uh, planted. And I do look forward to sharing an update, hopefully in two weeks, fingers crossed, uh, that these are gonna start to germinate and grow out so that I will have some citrus that is pre-sprouted for everybody that's attending the classes to take home. Well, I did 50 pots. There's two seeds per pot, so it's technically 100 plants. And I'm just going to lightly water them in the hose just because it's so cold out. And I didn't feel like wrangling a frozen hose. And, well, I'm really excited to give you updates on how these grow out. I've never done this here at home. I used to do this when I worked at a nursery, so I'm pretty confident that it is going to be a success. But I do hope that you will subscribe and continue to tune in so that you can watch the progress. As always, thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll be able to attend one of our great sessions that we are holding right here in our greenhouse. Happy gardening, everybody.